Have you heard this claim? A small group of beavers saved dying rivers in Washington. Not a myth. Farmers saw dry fields. Forests turned to ash. The salmon vanished. Streams cracked under the sun. Then a few hundred beavers showed up, and the land flipped. Within a short time, satellites saw water return under the ground. Wildfire losses dropped by almost half. Sockeye came back in strong numbers. What did the beavers do that pipes, pumps, and concrete failed to do? The answer looks simple. It is not easy. Stay with me for the story of how nature's quiet builders beat million-dollar projects without diesel, steel, or code. By the end, you may change how you see water, fire, and the way life repairs itself. From the early 2000s, heat waves hit hard. Drought followed. Wildfires swept through repairing forests. About 7 out of 10 trees in some valleys went down. No shade meant hot water. Salmon eggs failed. Adult fish stopped their run. Rain did not help. Burned soil turned water repellent. Storms pushed mud, ash, and sticks into the channels. Black slides tore through valleys and buried what survived. In summer, big parts of the Yakima system ran on reused water. Nitrates, phosphates, and pesticide loads rose. Green slime spread. The river smelled bad and cooked under the sun. The loop locked in, drought, fire, tree loss, mudslides, erosion, dead fish, dead ground. People tried the classic menu. New reservoirs, half a million to two million dollars each. They changed the land and came with permits and fights. Pipelines across counties, more rules and delays. A few groups set up man-made mini dams in Utah and Oregon. A 2017 study out of Idaho flagged a problem. Storms broke many of them, upkeep costs more, and they failed to copy the full job a real beaver does. So the question rose, what if we let the original water manager work again? Before these valleys dried out, thousands of beaver dams sat on side streams and headwaters. Each dam acted as a small storage plant. Flows slowed. Silt settled. Water cooled. Marsh plants took root. When fur hunters wiped beavers out, the pumps went offline. People straightened streams, lined banks with concrete, and pushed water out fast. Winters brought flash floods. Summers left dust and rock. The land needed a tool that stores water high in the hills and releases it slowly. In 2007, the Medhow Beaver Project began. Crews trap problem beavers near towns and farms. Vets checked them. Teams tagged a few with GPS trucks took them up to Old Range in the Medhow and Yakima Highlands. Local tribal members blessed some releases. Cost per pair sat near two to $3,000. That total covered transport, checks, and follow-ups. Compared with a like-for-like -like artificial fix, that price came out 20 times cheaper. By 2021, more than 240 beavers went into over 50 sites in the Medhow area alone. Roughly two out of three settled and stayed. That rate is strong for a territorial animal. At first, nobody expected much. A few small dams, a few ponds, some willow shoots. Then the land answered. Dams two to three feet tall slowed water. Pools formed. Soil held moisture. Roots reached down and found a steady sip. Here is the key. Snowmelt did not blast out in a week. The dam spread the flow over weeks and months. Water leaked sideways under the surface and built shallow channels. The soil cooled. Microbes woke up. Worms came back. A thin dark layer formed. Washington State University teams later measured higher organic carbon near these dams, about 30% to 50% more. That gave willows, cottonwoods, and cattails a base to grow fast. Wetter ground means cooler ground. A paper in Ecological Applications tracked five big fires across a decade. Areas with beavers lost a tiny slice of trees, about 2% to 3%. 
outside those zones, losses went up to 60%. Fire crews also saved money each year near these wetland belts. Numbers ranged in the tens of thousands of dollars. Shake came back as trees grew. Stream temps held under 20 degrees Celsius 68 degrees Fahrenheit, a key line for salmon eggs. Chinook nurseries near beaver dams looked richer. Young fish counts rose about five-fold compared with reaches without dams. Survival from egg to young fish ticked up too. Because beaver dams leak through a mesh of sticks, fish can pass. Flow turns gentle. Where people built. Beaver dam analogs. In Oregon, more than 120 in one stream. Steelhead survival jumped by over 50%. As water spread, birds nested, frogs called, insects swarmed, and larger animals followed. The web switched on again. Okanagan County numbers told a clear story. Artificial restoration cost up to 40 times more than letting beavers work. A single stable dam over three years saved a farm thousands of dollars per dry season in pump time and power. Water near the surface also cut salt buildup and helped soils hold structure, which raised crop resilience in heat waves. This is not a fairy tale. Farmers have real losses when beavers cut fruit trees or flood an orchard. The State Wildlife Office fields many such complaints each year and a fair share comes from irrigation trouble. A dam in the wrong ditch raises water into roads or yards. Heavy storms can still blow a dam out and push a surge downstream. Some places lack wood shade or steady flow, so beavers fail there. Laws differ by county and state, so programs move at the speed of local consent. Mitigation is real, and it's growing smarter. People now wrap tree trunks with wire mesh so beavers can't fell them, install pond levelers, pipes running through dams, to control water height, and build fence barriers around irrigation intakes. If a colony settles in a risky spot, trained crews can trap and relocate the family safely. But the real key lies in cooperation. When landowners, tribes, agencies, and neighbors sit down early, mapping flood lines, setting clear water limits, and agreeing on when to intervene, conflict almost disappears. This community model spread worldwide. In Canada, one beaver dam near Little Buffalo famously stopped a massive oil leak, holding toxic crude until cleanup crews arrived. In the Chesapeake region, their pond slash nitrogen pollution that fuels algae blooms, outperforming expensive machines. Across continents, these humble builders prove that working with nature doesn't just heal ecosystems. It saves money, protects people, and inspires pride in every community that learns to live alongside them. So, can a few hundred beavers change the world? The proof is already in the rivers. When we stop fighting nature and start listening, recovery moves faster than we imagine. If this story made you rethink how restoration should work, Hit like, subscribe, and share it. Let's spread ideas that rebuild the planet one stream at a time. Because sometimes the real engineers wear fur, not hard hats.